<clears throat> this is where we get into the little bit. Um, it's not really flashy, I guess, but it's a little bit more um, modal, I guess. So right here is where we go mixolydian for a minute. What makes it mixolydian is we're play still playing a C sharp. We're playing a C natural on the first string, and then on. Uh, yeah, C sharp on the third string. I mean C natural. I'm sorry. So this little D mixo lick kind of goes like this. Yep, so Mixolydian. And legato-y, it's very legato right here. Hammer on, hammer on. Pull off. Pull off's hammers mostly. Slide. That's my little uh, licky lick. A little bit flashier, it's not pentatonic bass. I thought that was the perfect time to kind of break out of the kind of predictable pentatonic stuff and straight D major stuff. And uh, I really like the sound of Mixolydian I've, I've discovered as I've started trying to grow in my lead playing and scale stuff. Now here we shift gears. I'm jumping up to the 10th fret. Which is kind of your basis for your D minor pentatonic. D major pentatonic was based around the seventh. Um, seventh and tenth fret. Start on the tenth fret. There's D major. Scooch it up three frets. Now you're D. Now you're in D minor. Now. I didn't go straight D minor pentatonic right there. What I did is I did a little cheeky bend. Which is, it's kind of, I'm playing D major scale. Right here. By uh, bending this 12th fret E up to this F sharp. So I pick and bend the 12th fret E. I whole step bend up to this F sharp. I love that. Pick and bend. Pick and bend. Pick and bend again. Come back to the D at the 10th fret. Now, so that was basically D major. D major. Now, I, I kind of, in the middle of that lick, I sort of switch gears from D major diatonic, seven note scale, right into D minor. So it goes bluesy there. There's where it goes D minor. That's the lick. All right, so I went a little rake. Then I did a double stop on the 10 and 10 of the second and third. Double stops on the 10th frets of the 2nd and 3rd string. 
and then a bend, bend both of those notes at the same time. Very uh, Texas country-ish. Bluesy. All right, now, here's a cool lick. A totally sort of stole from Chappers. I love this, straight out of Bleed the Light. I love that song, Rob. Love it, Bleed the Light, it's awesome. A little sweepy thing, I'm not a sweep picker, not a shredder, but there's a little sweep right here. 10th fret of the fifth string. So awesome. Love that. Now, I, I kind of stole that part, but I, I changed it. I love that lick, but I didn't copy it perfectly. I went... So I did a little hammer there. 10 to 12. I want to do a little sweepy thing, because sweeping is just kind of cool if you use it here and there. I'm not awesome at it, but I wanted to use it. So that's my lick. He goes, Rob goes... That's Rob's lick. My lick goes, my tribute homage to Rob, because this was on Rob's forum, so I had to stick a Chapper's lick in my solo. So we went the sort of a modal thing again. Well, it's pentatonic. I think it's mixo. And then I went right back to D minor blues. <laughs> Typical pentatonic thing to do there. Bend the 13th fret up. Up to a D actually. So that little uh, sweepy mixo into D minor pentatonic lick goes like this. Slowly. So right there in this one position, I was able to mix some D major into D minor pentatonic, and then mixed in a different technique, the sweepy thing. So that's a bluesy thing to use a minor, a, a minor pentatonic thing over what's basically a major chord progression. But then I switched up the technique. So changing techniques. Um, through this whole thing, I've been doing bends. We did hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, the um, double stops. Uh, the bend and pluck stuff, you know. Where I'm, I'm using some picking and some plucking. So hybrid picking. No solo would be complete without some three note per string hullabaloo stuff. So we're coming out of D, D minor pentatonic. But we can also switch very easily to D major diatonic scale, three note per string. Right? So. Great place to do some three note per string um, sequency stuff. 
Uh, we're gonna go 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. Right, we cross strings. Change strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. So these are six note sequences. I'm gonna do six notes again, starting on the fifth string this time. Right? Continue the six note pattern, starting on the fourth string. It's mostly picked and hammered, because I'm not I'm not a real fast, fast picker. I, I'm not real good at picking here, real fast. So I, hammer ons are work for me. All right. Now what we did, we shifted. I didn't continue through the scale straight. If you kept going, you would get to this, 12, uh, 14, 15. Well, what I did is I shifted position. I went. We used the same kind of first finger, second finger, third finger, uh, fourth finger. Well, you can skip over to the second string, 14th fret. We're back to that scale position we had at the beginning. But we're at the octave version of it. D major. Uh, so we did the little Hammer on, six note, three note per string, six note sequence. Now, once we got to here, it goes like this. A little skip in the middle, skipping positions again. Once we got to here, I wanted to do something different. I would do some arpeggios. 17, pull off to 14, 15 on the second string, 14 on the th th third string, 16 on the fourth string, and then 17 on the fifth string. There would be a regular D major arpeggio. All right, now it's the place to do a little sweep again. I'm not a sweeping master, so yeah. But I thought it would be cool if I wrote a little tiny sweepy thing that would give me a reason to practice it. But I'm only going to the fourth string. So it's a little sweep followed by a little walking up on one string, changing position yet again. I'm ending on this D, fifth string, 17th fret. An octave. Actually, that phrase ends on a C sharp, which is kind of an odd thing, but I thought it sounded cool. We bend this B up to, uh, we bend this D. whole step to E. Very uh, D major. Actually, I think I kind of missed this in the take that's on the solo. I didn't bend it quite enough, but I had played that take a couple of times and I was tired, so it stayed. on a C sharp, kind of a cool thing. All right, now to wrap up the solo, uh, I did one of my favorite things, very easy to do. It's very Randy Rhodes doing these uh, two string arpeggios. Big thing in Mr. Crowley, it's one of my favorite solos. 
So I thought, you know what? I love those two string arpeggios. And they're not super hard to get up to a kind of quick speed. So what's happening is I'm playing a D major two string arpeggio. We have an A, 17th fret, to an F sharp on your 14th, to the D on your 15th of your second string. So it goes. Now I'm down picking this first string and an up pick on the second string. That's an easy thing to kind of get up. To pull off, pick and a pull off, then pick that second string. D major. Shift up to pinky is now on the 19th fret. Where you have a B, a G, and a D. So it's a G major note, G major chord. We're going from a, a D major arpeggio, shifting up, G major. Scooch up two frets to the 21st, 21st fret, pull off to the 17th fret. Gives you the A major. Arpeggio. So we went D major, G major, A major, D major, G major, A major, and then we're going to bend up. We want to end on this D. But I'm going to bend up from this C. So again, it kind of went to mixo there. We're bending up from the note that makes D mixolydian, D mixolydian, which is a C natural. Up to the D. Need more gain. So the solo ends on the, the home note, D, but I wanted to bend up, kind of a blues bend. I wanted to bend up to it. Yeah. So, see if I can play this whole thing slowly for you. I will try. played that solo I guess completely all the way through since probably the day I recorded that um, that take for the jam on the form I had a really really good time kind of composing this because I actually tried to put a lot of thought into it to uh, stylistically what I wanted it to sound like what I wanted people to think uh, about me when I played a solo what what sounds like Ryan Right? What sounds like a dude from East Texas who likes hard rock music. And that was what I wanted to come off. Now whether it came off that way or not, who knows. <laughs> I ended up uh, quite liking it. I didn't play it as cleanly as I wanted to on the thing. But that's what happens sometimes when you write a solo that's got some techniques in it that you actually have to practice them. You know, it's probably five or ten percent above my 
ability level on some like the sweet picky stuff because I've never really done sweet picking um, a lot. So there it was. That was how I approached the solo. I knew I wanted to use certain scales. I knew I kind of wanted to start low and work my way through, transition through these different parts of the neck and end up, you know, it's always great to end a solo, you know, on the high note. That's always very impact, impacting. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was some of my thought process behind writing a solo. Again, some dudes, when they want to solo, they just play on the track and they just sit down and just go for it. And that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. You get some really cool things. Um, probably some of these licks, I was in the position I wanted to play. I fiddled probably a little bit, but for the most part, I kind of put a bit of thought into the sound I wanted to get over the certain section of the music. <clears throat> so for me, it was um, a little bit of a challenge and I, I really got a lot of satisfaction out of writing, composing a solo. It was really cool. I really enjoyed doing it. <clears throat> it was fun. So I hope that that helps you uh, maybe give you some ideas for if you're having to write a solo or compose a solo, um, maybe just the thought process behind it and how you go about it. Uh, I thought about keys and scales. I thought about techniques. What kind of techniques? You know, I, you know there's the bends, uh, the country bends, the pick and the pluck, the hybrid picking, there was sequencing, there were sequences in there, there was pull-offs and hammer-ons, there was the three note per string, six note sequence patterns, there was some sweeping, uh, and there was bends, of course. So think about techniques. Maybe it's a technique you're not very good at and you wanna get better at it, perfect way. Write something that uses that technique that you need to practice. It might be legato hammer on pull off stuff. It might be sweeping. It could be bends if your bends are not awesome. <clears throat> so composing something that makes you practice is a good way to do that. And I had a great time. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment below. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, we'll talk to you soon. Please subscribe if you enjoy our videos. It really helps out a lot and uh, we'll keep making them. And I need to get back to doing some more playing and teaching videos. I've done a lot of reviews lately and some day in the life bloggy things and that kind of stuff, but we'll get back to playing videos pretty quick here. So thank you so much for watching. I know it's long, I hope you liked it. Keep the music alive. Chapman Guitars, <clears throat> who make guitars from Treewood. I loved using this guitar on that solo. It actually gave me the exact sound that I wanted from the Guitarnivore humbuckers. I recommend keeping the Guitarnivores for many months if you buy an ML2. You might find you really like them. I did. <laughs>